Well, with me today is Formula Two driver, Brad Benavides. Thank you so much for joining me, Brad. Thank you, LA, for having me here. Um, really appreciate the opportunity and looking forward to, to have a chat with you. I know, well, it's really good to see you again, obviously, after seeing you in Abu Dhabi in that test that you did um, for Sharuz. So you are a Formula 2 rookie this season, that's no secret. Uh, first of all, how does it feel to graduate into Formula 2? Well, for the moment, it's, you know, it feels a bit surreal still to be here, even though I already did one round in this championship. Um, here, sitting one day ahead of the start of the second round, I'm still feeling like the like the surrealness of of the opportunity to be here in in this championship and and in these races you know i just i'm super grateful you know to life or also obviously of course also to my to my main sponsors which is aix investment group and my family and all the support that i've had uh, throughout the years in my relatively short um racing career to to be able to 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 have me here at this moment you know it's i'm really grateful for that and and I definitely won't be, um, I won't be taking it for granted. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're in the F3 uh, paddock last season for one season. As you said, it's been been quite a quick sort of step up for you. Yet yeah, you seem yeah. to have adapted really, really well. So, so how were those first two races for you in Bahrain? Because to, from from my point of view, it was a very frantic start to that to that uh, sprint race on the Saturday. Yeah, the sprint race didn't go too bad, to be honest. I mean, it all obviously started with qualifying on Friday that uh, it maybe set me a little bit more back to where at least the potential lied um, or late. Um, of course, uh, anyways, being the first qualifying in Formula 2, coming from Formula 3, not having done you know a really competitive campaign in Formula 3, um, it wasn't like it was expected for me to be fighting like the top 10 positions um nevertheless the potential to be honest with you it was completely um and fairly to be within that window um it was just up to really just getting the lap done um i was like let's say three tenths three tenths and a half off that let's say that uh, that uh top 10 window and and uh and it was completely doable, you know, considering also on my lap, because really it was only one lap in qualifying. I made a quite a big mistake, actually, huge mistake in, in T10, which costed me compared to even my teammate around like three tenths and a half. So um, definitely the potential of what could have been was there. And um, I left Bahrain, at least in terms of pace for qualifying and even in the race with, with that uh, with that good feeling. Um, and then, of course, in terms of how the race went, yeah, the sprint race didn't go too bad. It was, uh, I was able to make a bit of a step forward at the, let's say, middle, until the middle part of the race or even all the way up to the end. Um, then the feature race, I had a little bit of misfortune with the puncture, um, a rear right um, puncture that literally compromised from start to finish my race. Because even at the start, uh, the start of the race you know it, it basically compromised a bit my starting procedure because on the, my dash my steering wheel i basically couldn't see all the information that i needed to have to do the a proper start like a um a proper pull away and um and then um after the safety car um restart when i went to do the first push lap after the safety car restart i realized that i had the puncture because that it was like it was a slow puncture so um, it was within the safety car period that it, the pressures really started going lower and lower and lower. And then at the restart of the safety car, obviously, boom, I went straight into locking off all tires because one tire wasn't doing its job uh, properly, of course, because it had a complete low pressure. And uh, and then, yeah, I had a box and, and change for that uh, and change for that new tire that basically just put me on a back marker of gap of 50 seconds 45 seconds with the pit stop and, and whatnot nice. so uh, uh so you've mentioned your teammate and you've mentioned you know we've mentioned Sharuz, who's your new team you were at carlin last year in formula three so how have you adapted to the new team to Sharuz? yeah to be honest um i've adapted really very well um with the crew members and my engineer and uh, the mechanics some mechanics are actually spanish some mechanics some spanish mechanics that i already have worked with in the past uh 
also some some um some french members and some uh, czech members so yeah i i really like the multicultural part of the team i i appreciate that a lot because I, i'm a pretty mucho uh multicultural person myself uh so so yeah i i'm pretty comfortable with them already being that it's the second round it feels like i've already done like you know half the season with them so that's a uh, really positive yeah, and and then we've seen pictures of you um, riding behind your teammate Roy Nassani on a scooter in the Jeddah paddock. In the Jeddah paddock. Um, so, so what were you up to there, and and how is he as a teammate? Yeah, Roy is actually a fantastic teammate. To be honest, like he's uh, really mature, in the sense that um, you know he doesn't let um, basically um, you know practical issues or or you know what people say about him it, it does, he basically doesn't let that get to his head he's really he's really just who he is and and so with me his you know if we ever have any issues on track i'm pretty sure that he's mature enough and professional enough to just you know talk it through and um that's good for me uh, because you know at least there's no emotions um that are that that can be in between and that can let's say mess up our relationship because at the end of the day a teammate you need to get along with him professionally to to also push the team in the right direction sometimes you know and sometimes it's you really need to to have a, a good relationship with your teammate in that sense because it's you know it's at the end of the day it's a team and uh, it's all one it's all one big effort and the more the crew two crucial components is the driver so if we get along and we know how to intelligently work to have a you know a better better result then obviously that's that's ideal and to be honest uh, it looks like we can we can have that this year so i appreciate that very much yeah and, and the moment that i was there on the scooter was because we were a bit late to the photos uh the, the grid photos and uh he had the electric scooter and yeah and also it's really hot you know and here in the in the Middle East, so there by rain here in Jeddah, the heat really gets to you. So sometimes, if you can, if you can um, opt to to the option of going to wherever you need to go on a scooter, then then you just do it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even though uh, it's a hot breeze when you're on that scooter, it's still a welcome breeze. Yeah, a lot times. more welcoming than just walking under the sun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So settling in with Jeruz, I, I where are you based now? Have you made the move to the Czech Republic, or are you still based somewhere in your, you know, somewhere else in Europe? Yeah, no, I'm actually still based in uh, the same place that I've been based since 2017, since 2018, um, which is. Uh, the Valencian coast of Spain, I live in Castellon. Um, yeah, it was a. It's definitely an idea to move um, my yeah my 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 base to to Czech Republic to to Prague, so I'm closer to the team. But at the end of the day, as well, I have my let's say my management team as well in Spain. Yeah, in terms really of you know if I need to go to the to Prague and and settle in a bit with the team in terms you know. Of, preparing anything i just i'll just go and and, and do it um and uh, traveling is not an issue um you've already mentioned that you're multicultural and from what i can see from your bio it says the us guatemalan spanish so can you explain that for us yeah so i mean i was born in the us and i lived there until i was basically 11 years old 10 years old um but uh my dad is from guatemala and uh, but with Spanish heritage, um, basically his you know his grandparents on both sides of his parents are are Spanish, and then um, my mom is Colombian. Um, so yeah, when I was eleven, I moved to Guatemala, um, and I lived there around five years, um, and so that's why I also have my Guatemala nationality, because apart from moving there and living there, then I also before I was actually a, a swimmer and I needed to do like uh, international competitions. And so I needed to represent Guatemala to be part of the Guatemalan, um, you know, uh, national team to be able to be part of the, 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 the races that I, or the competitions that I go to. So I actually got the Guatemalan passport due to that. Apart from that, I, I don't have the Colombian passport, but I am, you know, 50% blood of, of Colombia from my mom. 
Um, so yeah, that's basically why I'm so multicultural. Then I moved to Spain when I was 16. So yeah, and I also lived for let's say a couple of months in Colombia. You know, so uh, yeah, I, those are basically the four countries really where I've where I've lived in. That's really, really fascinating. Uh, but what else is fascinating, as you just mentioned, you were a competitive swimmer. Uh, explain that and, and really sort of tell us what made the decision then to go into motorsport rather than staying with, with a swim team and maybe becoming an, an Olympian. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, my dad was actually an Olympic swimmer. He went to the Olympics in 1969 and... Um, and it was actually quite competitive. And uh, so, yeah, I was sort of like the, the family sport, really. I was introduced to swimming even before I could have, you know, before I had memory. Um, and, yeah, just uh, I was doing swimming basically my whole life until I was around 15, where then I then decided to to uh, move to karting. And it was a, it's a bit like unconventional really the decision because in swimming i was actually quite competitive you know and my marks or my times were let's say central american level basically the best um south american level competing at the top european level even when i would come to spain i was in the spanish championship i, I could be competing you know in the finals or close to the close to the podiums and I, I knew that because of my, you know, my times and I was always training, even when I came, when I initially moved to Spain. Um, but this, the decision was a bit unconventional as well, because um, when I moved or when I initially started karting, I was always, you know, struggling massively. Um, and yeah, in karting, I, was, I wasn't nearly as competitive. So it was just really, it was really baffling basically for uh, me and my family, you know, and we really wanted to understand what was it that we needed to to be at the top of these races. And um, we basically just let aside com the complete career, the swimming career. Once we once we, you know, the, um, once we saw that you know, once we basically began to have like this hunger to really, you know, finally be at the top at, at this uh, racing that we were doing. It was so, sort of like a slow transition anyways, because I started karting in Guatemala when I was living in Guatemala. Um, but um, yeah, it was basically, I was racing there in Guatemala and then I would come to Europe and I was like at the back. In Guatemala, I was at the front and then and back in Europe. And then when I come to Europe again, I was at, at the back basically. So it was, it was like, we need to be at the front when we go to Europe, we move to Europe and we just, you know, send it, you know, that was basically like the mindset. Not a lot of people would have done that. They would have just, stuck to what they're good at but uh that's why it's a bit unconventional you know the decision <laughs> yeah well it sounds like what whatever you chose to go in in life you were always going to be a competitor so you know um for, for us that are most sport fans i think that we're, we're blessed that you chose this this route uh so coming back to the racing are there any circuits that you've not raced at before perhaps on on this year's calendar um that that you're really looking forward to driving on well, uh, I'm really looking forward to drive here in Jeddah. I haven't, I, I haven't even, uh, even, um, yeah, no, but I mean, there's so many rookies that haven't uh, driven here yet. But uh, yeah, I definitely, obviously, haven't driven here yet. I'm really looking forward to that. The track looks really nice. It's literally beside the sea. I think that's fantastic. The the city, I'm actually quite enjoying it. I really like the fact that you know you, you have the sunset there with the with the sea and and the infrastructure of the track is so nice like we're in really comfortable like pit allocation like our pits are really um spacey and we have like our own like offices for each team so i'm really enjoying this weekend at the moment which is a track that i haven't driven in and obviously melbourne is going to be really interesting um i've never been to australia and it's like super far away so it's 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 probably going to be like a really weird feeling to be there uh, for the first time um, and obviously the track itself is really nice. You know, I remember ever since I used to play Formula One on the PlayStation, um, it was always you know, always the first like uh, event. It was the first racetrack that you that you'd race in for the you know in, in the in the in the Formula One game, even in real life. Obviously, it was the opening round, so that's gonna be so like historically and at least in my in my life, it's been because of that. Um, just because of that, you know, it's been a it's been an interesting track um 
and where else I haven't raced? I haven't raced in Baku. I don't really know much about that track. Yeah, apart from that, I've, I've raced in, in all the other tracks. Uh, I mean, Abu Dhabi, I raced in the Formula Regional car. So I just just a couple of months ago, basically a month ago, I would say Abu Dhabi, but now I can say that I've raced there. So yeah, with, all, with all this in mind, you know, with your new team and, and coming into Formula 2, uh, what are your hopes for this season for yourself? Yeah, so my hopes are... Um, you know, last year it was it was quite a difficult season. It was my first season in Formula Three, but even so, at the end of the season, uh, I was able to be more competitive, and I had a first taste, let's say, of like a f almost front row start and and leading the pack for at least it was just at least a lap, but it was a lap in in, in Spa, and so like I had that first taste of being highly competitive and. And I loved it, you know. And anyways, it's I already feel like it's my life purpose, basically, to 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 be doing this. And it's really just it just mm, racing surrounds like my whole life already, you know. And uh, um, it would be it would mean the world to me if I can, you know, have more of more of that taste this year um, to be highly competitive and and fighting for podiums, fighting for top positions. It's, it's all that matters to me. You know? like, so, uh, That's fantastic. I mean, you know, it's, it, w would that would that ultimate dream be Formula One or progressing to, you know, Formula E or IndyCar, you know, future-wise, where can you see yourself in motorsport? Well, of course, Formula One, you know, that's it's already been my, that's the ultimate dream. For any racing driver and you know ahead of the most ultimate difficulty that's where the human brain always wants to you know um point its 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 mission you know and its goal so of course it's formula one and i'll embrace every single every difficulty or every any adversity that comes my way that uh that that will be in my way to to get to formula one um and I will also, you know, be grateful for any opportunity that I can that I can get that wouldn't be Formula One. Um, and obviously, I will do my best in it. As you know, I'm already, let's say, like dedicated to my racing career. It's my only mission and my only purpose. So, whatever it is, I will I will give it my my all. You know. Oh, that's just amazing, Brad. And and I wish you all the best. I really do. And thank you so very much. And best of luck this weekend in Jeddah. And I really hope to catch up with you again soon. Thank you, Ali. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me once again. I'm going to catch up uh, as, soon as, as soon as we get the next chance. See you then.